High in the Andes in northern Chile, one of the world's most challenging projects is underway. A radio astronomy observatory with no less than 66 parabolic antennas is being built at an altitude of 5,000 meters, a truly Herculean task. First scientific observations are expected in 2009, with the full array being completed in 2012. ALMA, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, will be the largest and highest observatory of its kind in the world. The panorama around San Pedro resembles a Martian landscape. It is from this oasis in the Atacama Desert that construction firms and engineers set out to work at the two sites of the ALMA project, not without great logistical and safety issues. About 25% of persons we send up there cannot take uh, the altitude, they get ill, and we, we have to take them back down again. Um, also, uh, the production uh, of the laborers, of the workers, up there is only about 60% of what it would be at sea level. So everything goes slower, everything is more difficult. Um, the logistical aspect means we have to ship all these highly technological devices from all over the world to a remote country to an altitude which, uh, which uh, a project of that kind has never been constructed. The first site at 3,000 meters is to be the operations center. The 600 meter diameter building will house all the technical facilities, the remote control of the telescope array and the reception of its signals. It will also accommodate the teams of visiting scientists during their use of the observatory. From this operation center, due to be completed in 2008, the dirt track climbs some 30 kilometers into the mountains in surroundings with practically no vegetation except for an occasional and rare variety of tall cactus tree. With the 6,000 meter Likankabur volcano dominating the surrounding desert, the views are majestic but desolate. As the altitude increases, workers and visitors must take great precautions. Lo primero es hidratarse muy bien y tomar mucha agua aunque uno no sienta sed, ya que lo, lo primero es síntoma de deshidratación. First of all, there's dehydration. One must drink a lot. Symptoms are headaches and fatigue. When a person doesn't feel well, it's probably the start of dehydration. The other thing we need is this bottle of oxygen. It's the only remedy to counter mountain giddiness. Symptoms are also headaches, fatigue and nausea. Slight symptoms, nothing dangerous, but the only solution is to take some oxygen. It helps. Remember that at 5,000 meters, there's only half the amount of oxygen as at sea level. Never has such a gigantic technical facility been built at such an altitude. Apart from a single prototype antenna, the 500-acre site is empty. Stakes just indicate the future emplacements for the antenna positions, but one can imagine how it will look. The radio antennas, each 12 meters in diameter, will point towards and receive the signals from the same celestial object. At millimeter and sub-millimeter wavelengths, these will be correlated and sent down to the operation center. The array will provide data equivalent to that received by one single antenna several kilometers in diameter. In this international cooperation between the United States and Canada, Europe and Japan, the European Southern Observatory is playing a leading role. And like ESO's Paranal Optical Observatory, ALMA will work hand in hand with many space science yes. missions. ALMA will bring a, a lot of things covering the whole uh, range of disciplines that we are doing today. They will study the uh, uh, creation of stars and the process that forms stars and planetary systems, which is completely unknown at the moment. You look at cold objects like the gas that moves out from young forming stars. Uh, with the radio telescope, you can study the movement of this gas in detail.
The ALMA Observatory will help prepare ESA's Darwin mission, several spacecraft flying in formation looking for planets like our own. You use the same principles as you have with ALMA. You take small telescopes, you put them some distance away from each other, and they will work to a certain extent like uh, a telescope of the diameter that is equal to the distance between them. If there are planets there, we can take the analysis of their atmospheres and find out whether they host life or whether they could host life. The Darwin Space Mission, the ALMA Radio Observatory, both projects are pushing technology to its limits. And with their data, we'll be opening new chapters in our understanding of our universe.